Kendrick won. That that's that's really all there is to it. If you've been following the channel, you've been following me and my commentary on the whole Drake, J. Cole for one song, Kendrick Lamar beef that has been escalated during this time over the last it's been like what three four months now <laughs> that this has been going on i've always been in the camp and it's not necessarily that i don't like kendrick lamar right that's what a lot of people are thinking a lot of people are calling me whatever the fuck y'all are calling me i don't even care i've been defending drake on drake's side because what people that are kendrick fans don't want to admit or a lot of them at least don't want to admit or just want to see it as something other than what it is Kendrick's support half of them are Kendrick Lamar fans half of them are just Drake haters like statistically he is on top of of everything and this is with Kendrick having a boost from the not like us streams and all of that and and people are still hating people are still denying people are still bringing up ghost writing or whatever the fuck whatever y'all's reasoning is as a Drake hater to discredit him and everything that he has done for the genre of music. I've said it many a times, dr defending Drake online, I feel like is being an outspoken Republican online. People always want the left to win. People think that the left is winning at all times because the left are the loudest and they're the ones silencing the Republicans. Donald Trump wins in 2016. He's more than likely gonna win again in 2024 <laughs> based on that first Based on that first debate, like people are so fucking surprised when that happens because they thought that whatever discourse they saw on social media, was going to translate exactly to that in the polls. Republicans don't speak their mind. They just go fucking vote or they, they do what matters. It's the same thing as being a Drake fan. Like I speak my mind as a Drake fan and a Kendrick Lamar fan, but I do think that at the time Family Matters was the better diss. Like saying that out loud triggered everybody and y'all fucking say, oh, Ernest, you're just being a hater. Oh, fucking you just don't like K-Dot, even though I have all of his albums downloaded. I listen to them on the regular. I'm just not a fan of K-Dot, apparently. But then Drake goes and wins in numbers even after all of this Drake hate. Even after losing 6 million monthly listeners, he's still on top. That is why I'm defending Drake. On top of the fact that I can hear his pen. The casuals, they don't want to admit that they've never heard a, song, a single rap track from Drake where he is actually rapping rapping in the way that he does people don't want to hear that that fear sound translates into the Drake that we have now I'm just saying all of that to lay the groundwork and saying that I have been a huge Drake supporter in all of this as one of the only reactors that seems like is but even saying that I feel like now after the music video dropped for not like us that was checkmate he lost I had been saying the whole time that Drake is either not, I mean, I feel like it's more neck and neck than what people had thought it was before the music video. People don't want to admit that Family Tie or Family Matters was just as good of a diss as Not Like Us, but the music video just solidified it. And I forgot about that, about Kendrick Lamar's videos, that they are highly conceptual, that there's a lot going on. I actually recorded it on 4th of July, I believe, whenever it dropped. I didn't post it because at this point, like, the first reaction is nowhere near my reaction now. It dropped on 4th of July. I had an emergency, immediately had to leave out of town and was gone all weekend, which is why it wasn't posted along with the Eminem video wasn't posted uh, because I never had a chance to edit. But in that weekend, the entire time, I had probably watched the music video seven, 10 times just from an analytical point of view, not even being like, a, ah, fuck Kendrick Lamar, ah, ah, fucking I think Drake should win. There is so much depth in Kendrick Lamar music videos. And there's so many like checkmate moves in this music video in particular, people are talking about the fucking owl in the cage bird, whatever. That's That was cool imagery. That wasn't even the hardest hitting part. After going back and rewatching and rewatching, everybody giving commentary on threads, giving commentary on fucking TikTok, giving Tom commentary on X, there's no way to deny, like, the bird, the bird thing was cool, smashing the owl, obvious, but so many things that made Family Matters as strong of a diss as it was, those points evaporated. And, and I'm not saying that Kendrick doesn't have domestic abuse allegations against him. I don't know, but having Whitney in the music video that was directed by Dave Free and Kendrick Lamar, her wearing a wife beater, the shipping containers are, are sex trafficking, and he's wearing the same suit that R. Kelly wore. When I initially watched the video, I was like, oh, damn, the cinematography goes crazy, as they always do. But it's always on a deeper level, I feel like, with Kendrick Lamar. And I forgot about that because I don't really watch too many Kendrick Lamar videos. He hasn't really dropped too many videos since I fucking started reacting. We got the one video that I couldn't even post because he was raw dogging his fucking wife or girlfriend at that time after getting into a crazy fight 
I can't post that shit on YouTube. Yeah, bro, but this music video solidified. Now, there are still things that are very hypocritical of Kendrick Lamar, and I still feel like if there ever was an ick that I got from Kendrick Lamar, if we're talking about in, like, Gen Z coded language, an ick that I got from Kendrick Lamar is, one, everybody thinking that Bloods and Crips united just because two dudes dapped each other up and were dancing on stage. The Bloods and Crips have you have not united just because of Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar throwing a Kendrick and Friends concert for everybody is not good, just gonna make people forget about all the slain and all the revenge that still has to happen for people that have died on either side. Let's not act like that. We had two dudes dapping it up and fucking Crip what like yeah cool but that's not that's not really the way it's gonna play out in the real world. Also, mad hypocritical to open up the not like us moment in that in that concert with Dr. Dre out of all people who basically got a minor pregnant. Like we could call Drake a pedophile we want, and that's a that's a whole nother story. Like y'all are y'all are watering down the word by calling Drake a pedophile and by calling dudes who have an affinity for younger legal women to be called pedophiles. Like you're dumbing it down. The true victims of, of pedophiles, that makes them not feel as important because you're watering it down. Like, yeah, he might like young girls. Maybe dating a 20 year old at 37 is kind of a fucking odd look. Regardless, it's legal. Regardless of what you feel about it, regardless of how it looks, regardless of how out of the normal that it is for most people, that girl is a legal adult. There has been no fucking real evidence yeah, we can always talk about him kissing the 17-year-old on stage. Okay, weird. I don't know where that concert was. If it happened in Texas, he's good to go. 17 is the legal age. But yeah, I just thought that it was hypocritical for that moment to have that legend on the West Coast come out and say, I see dead people. You see dead people because you got to be looking in the fucking mirror unless everybody else forgot that you fucking impregnated a minor, basically. Dr. Dre, I say that with the utmost respect, obviously, but the facts are the facts. So that's mad hypocritical. Even you as a Kendrick Lamar fan watching this right now, you should see that as mad hypocritical. And if you don't, you're part of the reason why a lot of us tune out all the Kendrick Lamar fucking cheer because you're only cheering the parts you want to cheer and not recognizing the parts that are kind of bad but yeah Whitney and the wife beater all of Compton basically banding around him and I think really what did it in the most for me is that like everybody that he felt to include in his diss SZA got you wiped down CB got you wiped down first off no they don't Drake Shut the fuck up. There's no way that anybody that you listed in those five people are anywhere near as big as Kendrick Lamar they're big artists, but no, like dumb, dumb. And what's even dumber is now most of those people have posted. They've either said outright that I don't want to be a part of that, or they've posted like SZA, for example, the screenshot on her story saying, King, do you, did you not ask these people if they were on your side first? Did you just assume? Because that's what it seems like. And you know what they say about assuming makes the ass out of you and me. But bro, the imagery and just it's it's hard to it's hard to deny the cultural force or not even just the cultural force, but just the hit that Not Like Us has been. It's an annoying level of a hit, regardless if you even know about the beef or care about the beef. You're hearing that bitch everywhere that you go. They're, they're going to play that EDM sets. That's how crazy this track is. It's just a true checkmate like fucking moment, I feel like. I, I feel like I've been as, as objective as I possibly can be. I lean so far into the Drake side just because I'm trying to cancel out everybody that leans so far in the K-Dot side. Because I know a lot of the motherfuckers leaning in the Kendrick direction are not necessarily Kendrick fans. They're just Drake haters. That's why I've been leaning so far. I've been trying to put a voice out there to be like, hey, yeah, like half of the fucking fans over here don't even necessarily fuck with K-Dot like that. Because if they did, K-Dot would have surpassed Drake by now. That's how much That's how much support he has versus Drake. But Drake lost, bro. That's all there is to it. Too many checkmate moments. Too much powerful imagery in the music video. Too many people that he thought had his back posting about K-Dot's music video. And there's just not, like the colonizer thing, I get it. And again, I'm always gonna stand on the side where you're not really a colonizer if you're fucking profiting off of this entire thing. K-Dot fans are making it sound like Drake just went in there and raped all of the Atlanta fucking sound without giving back. Atlanta was popping before Drake, obviously, but the first song that I heard from the Migos was fucking the Versace remix with Drake. We're not gonna sit here and act like these people didn't profit or didn't find a whole nother world and level of success by collaborating with Drake. It was never a rape of Africa. It was never a rape of Atlanta. It was a collaboration. Yeah, it helped Drake. The motherfuckers made millions and they will still collaborate with Drake if they want to.
and they will want to. So I've never bought the whole colonizer thing, but everything else outside of that, bro, basically just like either disproved either with video evidence and not saying that Kendrick Lamar is not a wife beater, for example, but he definitely did unite. And there's going to be people just like me. And in the past, I was always like the Kendrick and Friends concert was not going to happen without Drake. Like there was never that moment that Kendrick was going to be like, all right, you know what? It's time to give back to Compton and unite the West. I still personally believe that concert only happened because literally we're dissing Drake and we're dissing somebody not from the black experience in America. At the end of the day, he's Canadian. Kendrick and everybody else does have a point that while he may be obviously mixed and while he may be leaning into the black side, the Memphis side, the Southern side, he's still not from the United States. The United States obviously has a very, a very tumultuous history with black Americans. Not, not, and we're not even talking about slavery all the way, all the way, like as most recent as redlining, redlining houses and redlining mortgages to not allow to like the United States is redlining and not allowing blacks and, and black Americans to purchase property or even have the same access to loans or government grants as other people in certain neighborhoods of the, of the country. Like, I don't know if there's redlining in Canada, but Drake's never experienced it like that. So I get it. I get Drake as an outsider. And while I still think that he's one of the more influential rappers, artist-wise, in our generation, and overall in general, he's obviously one of the biggest hit makers. He just, he just didn't stand, he just didn't stand a, a chance with Kendrick Lamar, I feel like. He just didn't stand a chance. I thought that he did, but he just made every wrong move. You ever been playing chess or you're playing Connect Four, and you line it up perfect and you're like, as long as this motherfucker doesn't see it, I'm, I'm cashing in on this. I feel like that was Drake. I feel like he made the wrong move. He, he did the wrong thing and he didn't see the play that was about to happen. He made that move. Can't take the move back. Once it happens, Kendrick capitalized and fucking squashed this whole thing. As a Drake fan, diehard Drake fan, like from the get go, I found this motherfucker on OVO blogs in 2008, heartbreak Drake type shit. Like as a fan of him, as a fan of him as an artist, as a fan of him as a rapper, I don't know if there's anywhere that he can go from here. I think you just gotta take the L and move forward. If I'm thinking about the beefs that Drake has been, and obviously he won the Meek Mill one, obviously he did lose the, the Pusha T one, but the Pusha T beef was not like this. Doopy Freestyle was a better track than Story of Adidon. Story of Adidon just had that fucking, that had that Oppenheimer bomb in the middle of it. People give Pusha T so much credit for that, but the only reason why people hold it in as high regard as they do is because of that story of Adidon, you're hiding a child. Without that line, that diss low key is ass. Without that fucking bomb, Doopy Freestyle wins over story of Adidon all day. But in this case, where I think Drake's strongest record is Family Matters, and that shit just got annihilated by this music video, that's it. I thought that Drake was gonna win just on the pettiness alone, but it just doesn't stand a chance. Like Kendrick Lamar is too good at it. And I've seen people online being like, ah, I, as a black man, I really don't like the way Kendrick went about doing this, yada, yada, yada. It made me think less of him. See, I always say that we're pushing the fucking, we're pushing the goal line. We're, we're, we're moving the goal line. Every time I was like, oh, now we're moving the goal line for like Drake does something and you move it further. He meets your bar and then you move it further and say, ah, nah, what I really meant, that was annoying. Now I'm seeing people like, ah, Kendrick just rubbed me the wrong way now. I'm like, bro, now you're moving the goal line for Kendrick. At first, it at first this was this is rap. This is how it goes down. Like, they're like, this is what it is. This is part of the culture. This is part of the competitiveness of rap. And then Drake starts losing hard now with the music video. And everybody's like, ah, now we're just, Ken Kendrick is supposed to be a higher being, a higher mind. Like, we don't... He's supposed to not be wanting to take down another black man, black like now we're now we're moving the goal line for Kendrick. First we first we enjoy hit him up and then now we don't like not like us because Kendrick's supposed to be a high like that's not how it works. You wanted the beef, this is the way it goes down. Mr. Morale and the Big Stepper should show you all you need to know the anger that is within within Kendrick Lamar. People are saying that they didn't see this, that this is catching them off guard. Bro talked about going to therapy for two du the double album. Did you not hear the anger in you? Not in you, but the song You by Kendrick Lamar. Did you not hear that anger originally? You should have heard that from the fucking jump. All that to say, guys, Kendrick won. That's it. They they both have their place in rap, right? They both have their place in hip hop. And I'm not and it's still not discrediting Drake from being the rapper that he is. I still think that his pen is elite. Like if you're casual and you want to say that he has a ghostwriter and the ghostwriter's pens are elite, 
I'm not here to fucking convince you. Honestly, you're probably not even watching this because this is we're already 20 minutes into this video. You're probably not even watching at this point. But if you're still bringing up Ghost Rider references, that, that automatically discredits any opinion that you might have in my head because obviously you aren't musically, lyrically savvy, intelligent enough, as much as that sounds bad, like I'm not calling you smart, but you lyrically are not intelligent enough to be able to pick out when it is you Lil Yachty writing a track, when it's Quentin Miller writing a track, when it's Drake writing a song. I can pick out a Drake song. I can pick out when somebody else has written a song for Drake. And I'm still yet to see a true Drake lyrical lyricism song. Bars. Like straight bars. I have still yet to see a ghostwriter pop up, a writer's credit pop up, any of that. So to me, Drake's pen is still elite. Kendrick's pen, still elite but they have their own versions of fame. Drake is a star. Drake is famous. Drake leans into the fame. He makes hits. If you want to hit, you're not fucking calling Kendrick Lamar. The Migos, when they first started, they didn't say, hey, you know who we got to get on this fucking remix to blow our asses up? Let's call K-Dot. That didn't even cross their mind. First one that crossed their mind and crosses your mind. And if, you're, and if you say otherwise, you're lying to yourself. The only one that should cross your mind when writing a hit or getting a hit is Drake. Bro has more number ones than the Beatles, and he's tied with Michael Jackson right now. He is the true hip hop, pop, R and B star artist in general, and he's gonna and he's gonna be the biggest artist of our generation. Him and Taylor Swift and The Weeknd gonna top our generation by a landslide. K Dot has a different type of fame. K Dot cares about the craft of making an album, not necessarily making hits but making sure that his emotions and his thought process of being black and growing up black in the United States and all the father issues and all of the political and socioeconomic issues that come with that, that live internally, that burden him. He's going to make sure that he brings that out once every five, six years. Drake is consistent. K-Dot is an explosion every five years. Not saying one is better than the other. And I think that's what a lot of people are trying to pit against each other. They're literally apples and oranges. I know that phrase don't make no sense. Why can't fruit be compared? I just hope this whole thing is over with already. We're four months into a fucking, into a beef, bro. I did not expect it to drag out for this long low key. And I'm not saying that he's milking it or K-Dot's milking it in any way. I can't say that being an Eminem fan because this motherfucker, motherfucker still talking shit about cannabis 30 years later. But I did not think we were going to go this long. I honestly cannot wait until these dudes can just get back to doing them. You know, Drake is an everyday, every man's emotional type of artist. Ah, he only writes that music because he dates young. I don't date young. No, stop being stupid. Drake makes music for the everyday person. Anybody going through a struggle, anybody going through love issues, anybody going through relationship issues, going through having to support people that don't want to even support themselves, but you have no other choice but to support them because that's the only way that you can show love to them. Drake is the everyday type of listen. Kendrick is the type of listen when you want to think about how the world has shaped itself. Both have their place in my playlist. They should in yours. If you made it this far, I appreciate you. We're fucking, this is, this is basically turned into a podcast. I've been recording for 28 minutes, seven seconds, eight seconds, nine seconds. Video's probably gonna be 15 minutes, but still. Hope y'all guys enjoyed it. Hope y'all guys feel the same. Like, like for me to come out and say that Drake lost, I hope that shows that I've been thinking analytically this entire time. I haven't been, oh, fucking copium. Oh, Drake fan cope. There was no coping. I thought what I thought. And now that thought has changed after this music video dropped. I hope that you are capable of doing the same. I hope you're not so locked in on every thought and that you just wait for that echo chamber. Be aware of the algorithm. Be aware of where you are and where your thoughts sit. Allow yourself to make changes in the way that you think. Allow yourself to be wrong allow yourself to be right the world's a shitty place because people who don't aren't able to bend their mentalities later